Max Gawler, Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cochin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Entering into the 2023 season, Carlton were optimistic that they were going to have their best team finally on the park under Michael Voss. However, an ACL injury to Zach Williams looked like it was the start of the derailment of what Carlton could become under this Voss coaching era. Thankfully for Blues fans and for Michael Voss, it didn't derail the season. But for us in the fantasy footy community, an ACL injury for Zach Williams meant not only did he miss a season, but it changed this Carlton structure and style. But as we enter 2024, he comes in at a price point that is something we cannot ignore. And yet the team has moved and evolved in the past 12 months. Do the two collide or do they work in harmony in great unison and beauty? We are talking about Zach Williams today. He's number 10 in my 50 most relevant. Joining me on this episode, as he has ever since we started the coaches panel, it's fellow co-founder Rids, mate. Nice to see you. Zach Williams is a fascinating player to talk about and deserving of his spot amongst the top 10 most relevant players for 2024. I'll tell you what, MJ, you know, the other day you were talking just ad hocly and you mentioned that Dawson retrospectively could be even number one. I reckon we might be having the same conversation about this guy in 12 months time. There certainly is that world. There is no 2023 data for us to talk about because he does that ACL injury in training just 12 months ago. So no 23 averages, top scores or tons. Although he does have a career high score of 145 in Supercoach and 142 in Dream Team and Fantasy. After a slightly underwhelming season in 2022, that plus the discount means, my goodness me, we've got ourselves a guy with crazy value potentially. 216,100 in Supercoach, just a touch over 440,000 in AFL Fantasy, and $322,500 in AFL Dream Team. Rids, we will talk about his fantasy output in a moment of legacy and history, both at Carlton and prior to that. But sometimes when a player is kind of notoriously injured or missed multiple seasons or big chunks of a season, we do forget just how incredibly skillful and talented these players can be. And Zach Williams is this type of player that breaks the lines, that takes the game on through rebounding and bounding out of that defensive half for Carlton and prior to that at GWS, takes the ball on underneath his wings, penetrating kick, really smart decision maker, dashing mover of the football. Carlton are going to be a better team with this player in their lineup in 2024. So if you look back from last year, okay, Zach Williams is pretty much Adam Sard's, you know, partner in crime. There's, they're going to have a two-fold weapon coming off half back. So it doesn't matter who you tag. You've got the other one to fall back on. And this is exactly why they got him, because he is that sort of player. He's one of those 100-metre players who can get the ball, take it 30 metres and kick it 60 or 70 metres, you know, down the line. He can take a bounce. He can take the game on. He changes everything everything for Carlton. And I don't want to understate that this guy is a weapon that they have not had in their arsenal for a good 12 months now. And look at what they did last year, MJ. They're actually a finals, finals contender. They're actually got one of the best lists in the league. Like this guy could actually propel them up into a premiership contender, into a grand final. And that's not overstating it at all. This is realistic. They made the preliminary final last year. They've got arguably the best one-two punch of key tall forwards in the game that on their day are both capable of bags of 10. One of the best defensive core you could ask for going around in terms of that dynamic rebound and lockdown. And then that midfield, sure, they probably are a little bit skinnier in the rucks than where they'd like to be, but Walsh, Cripps, Chera, Hewitt, 
they're just fine as where they are in a list. When you look at what he did historically at Carlton, I don't think there's anything really worthwhile touching on what he did at GWS for a number of reasons. One, it's so far removed and the game of football has evolved even over just a few handful of seasons, but also is a different club and a different time. But in 2022, There's patches and moments where we see this fantasy scoring uh, link into what you just spoke about, which is this incredible game changer between rounds two and five in 2022. In AFL fantasy goes 103, 98, 137 and 72. Yet despite that hot month, he still averages just a 69.8 and has some injury impacted games through there with an Achilles injury, taking him out for big chunks of the year. While well, Supercoach, that same stretch of games, 96, 107, 135 and 79. While the season prior, a spattering of 80s and 90s and the odd ton across the format. So we know there is fantasy football pedigree. And Rids, when we look at his price point, we will talk about the injury history in a moment. I think that's one of the great appeals because he's basically $10,000 more expensive than Harley Reid in Supercoach. It's it's about 20K in Dream Team and a little bit more in AFL Fantasy. They price things off the highest season of the two years, not the most recent. So he's only got the discount where he's 142,000 more than Harley Reid. And I use the word only intentionally. When we're in this price range where we're looking at cows, we don't often have a guy that has got proven historical pedigree of 140 plus ceiling of runs of 90 seasonal averages, at least in one format and can do that sort of 90 plus scoring over half a year with Zach Williams. We've got exactly that pedigree at an incredible price point. And the, Let's just look. We'll break it down properly, okay? okay? As you just said, and you beautifully worded it, okay? AF is slightly higher price than the other formats. So his price that point is at 49, okay? But we talk about mid-prices to have that 30 points of value in AF. That would be an absolute... If I told you at the end of the year hey, Zach Williams had an okay year. He averaged 80. That's actually realistic, yeah? Yeah, and historically done before. And it's not just once, though, multiple years. And I know you said we won't go into the G. That's fine, but historically, he's done it. So it doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter when. The thing is, this guy is an 80 slash 90 man. Okay, defender, and he's priced at 49 in AF. So it's really weird when you look over the whole comp, and I'm just going to generalize it just for AF for right now. Okay, mm, sure. You think to yourself, 30 points of upside, mate. Okay, who are the guys across all lines with potential to be a mid pricer with 30 points upside? You know, and it, they're not that many, they're pretty rare. So I could argue if a Paddy Dow was fit today, he's probably got that 30-point range to get into the mid-80s, okay? Is it a Grundy who's priced at 75 to 105? That's realistic. Maybe a Cherry who's priced at 64. Does he have it to 94? Look, it might be a little bit of a stretch, but it is realistic. It's in the ballpark. Zach Williams, however, it is beyond it's not just in the ballpark it is more likely to be 30 points of upside than the flip so that's where he is in af okay and yes he's priced a little bit higher due to the way that they work out their prices but he's right in the mix well he's high 30s in super coach and and mid 30s in dream team so he's priced at at 38.6 in super coach mj 38.6. So if you look at 30 points upside, and let's just say hypothetically 40 points, if you really want to be cheap for super coach, okay? Guess what, mate? That's 78. That's not even 80. Just sub 80. He's gone at 100 in season before. He's gone into 90s multiple times, you know? Like this is beyond capability and the way that he plays it and the way that super coach like they very love their halfbacks that take Mm -hmm. the game on that are efficient by foot that break the lines that take the kick-ins play you know 
they've got the whole lot, O'Radio. Mm. Zach Williams is pretty much, if you looked up a dictionary of an attacking halfbacker that is suited to super coach, Zach Williams's headshot would be returned in that search. Yeah. So this is ridiculous, the price. So this is why I'm sort of saying I'm actually surprised he's only 10th. Like this guy across all formats, and sometimes we struggle, yeah? So mm-hmm. I know you had Bontempelli just the other day. So we can go, oh, yeah, he's, he's got that one huge year in AF and DT. But super coach is where you would feel most comfortable captaining the guy, sure. okay? He's more SC relevant than the other two. And sometimes that's the discussion and go, and we're really at the pointy end, aren't we? We're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're really hairs picking hairs. Like we're, we're really, really, we're, we're trying to poke holes into stuff. Like why should someone be two spots lower than the next guy? <laughs> Right here. It's really, really crazy this time of but let's look at Zach Williams. He is absolutely at the right price point for all three formats. Yeah. And this is why I'm saying he could easily be number one relevant. Like and I know that there's a few big names to come, so I understand why he's at 10. But in 12 months' time, we might have a retrospective thought about this and we might be doing a Zach Williams and you might say exactly the same thing as what you did with Dawson a couple of weeks ago or days there, ago. There's absolutely every chance that he does that. You don't get at this price range the proven performance, the security of best 22. But what comes with Zach isn't just historical pedigree, confidence of scoring ceiling, great runs on the board. What comes with it? A gigantic injury concern that has a lot of people scared off. Zero games last year, nine games only in 2022, 14 games in 2021, and 11 in 2020. That is a total of 34 games in the past four seasons of AFL. So drastically speaking, that's a big alarm, Bills. However, I feel like I'm just setting you up to knock this one out of the park, Rids. Generally, injury history is a valid concern, especially if you're looking at this guy to be someone that you hold for large chunks of the season. But politely, while we could hope for an 85, 90, 95, 20-plus game year from Zach, for him to do his job, he doesn't have to get anywhere near 20 consecutive games for us this year. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, no, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 up front payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. And that's exactly right. And there's another little side. I'm not going to go too much because I know where you want me to go, okay? <laughs> so I'm not going to go there because I'm going to do a true ridge thing and go another way. The fact that he's less than 50% owned across the formats right now means it's 50-50, okay? 50% it's a bit of over the comp- in Supercoach. It's about 60%. Oh, yeah, 60%. But let's go um, – that levels the badge, right? He's either relevant, but he's relevant to the non-owners. He's relevant to the owners because of that split of ownership. And I know ownership's been discussed many times, and we're no doubt going to go through that plenty of times over the next few weeks as we lead into round one. Um, but this guy here is really tossing the coin. So his relevancy is... If he sucks, that's really relevant for the non-owners. If he goes pop and goes at that 30 points of value and he goes better and makes some serious coin, that's really relevant for the owners. So either way you look at this, this guy is relevant. If you don't think he is, he is. There's no doubt about it. There's an early buy problem though i want to ask you about that so round two it creates a stumbling block for us so we'll see him play an opening round 
We'll get him playing in round one with along with every team, but due to opening round, the teams that play in that round will take an early buy somewhere between round two and six. And in those rounds, we'll be stuck with a best 18, meaning all of Carlton will not be available for us in that round. And politely, while we might get a little price bump movement early because of him playing in opening round, it is offset by the fact he doesn't help us early on in the season. And it's the worst one, MJ. It's a terrible one. It's, a it's terrible round one. two. It's the yep. worst one. Even at round three, we could go, you know what? He's probably made enough to be In able AFL to fans, explore. Sure. Oh, all of them, really, because you've got the three price cycles. And Correct. if you can have a couple of price rises and just get that extra game, that's fine. We can get a couple. Then you can explore. Do we want to go earlier trading out of him? Do we want to, you know... It's really, really awful. <laughs> he's round two. He's sort of a rock and a hard place. So he's really much, pretty much become, hey, you've got to start this guy. And it's almost as like you can't trade into him unless mm. he absolutely pops round one before that round two buy. But guess what? He's priced that point might go okay. up a lot to the point where it's becoming risky to trade into him because he's not going to make the same amount of coin. So it's a really, really hard one to work out, okay? So my thing to everyone is sometimes we get a gift horse, right? Okay? Let's not overthink this one. We've got a guy, he plays in round zero. See what he does in round zero. See how he looks. See what happens. And then make your decision from there. Because no matter whether it's Supercoach or AF or DT or whatever else, it's really, really hard. Now, obviously, what I was saying before is only relevant. This DT and Supercoach, you could trade into it, but sure. that's a waste of a trade, okay? Because you'll be on the bubble. And that's what I'm saying. If it was round three or round four, there's at least a couple of price rises. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you could trade out of him, but trade it into him. You could do that, but why would you? Otherwise, yeah. you'd be doing what? A Chapman to a Zach Williams? Like just for an extra score in round two when yeah. it's best for 18? Like, yeah. And you're likely to have a rookie playing anyway that's going to pop that week. So it's not a major hassle. So no. it's the thing that I really love about this is his round 14 buy. Mm. Okay. Because that gives you some sort of understanding of the expiry date of Zach Williams because he's unlikely to become a season-long premium. And I won't use the K word because everyone's up in arms about the K word. Cause like, I think I've along the way with the extra trades, we've moved away from the K word. Okay. Um, so you've got to be a little bit more adaptable, mm. but you think about it round 14, that means you're actually have the ability to trade out to a guy who's had a buy in round 12 or 13, mm. who's bottomed out you can actually go a couple of rounds earlier than that if you need to cash in and have a stepping stone to someone that's more suited to your buy structure in your team you've got a lot of opportunity there that's the thing i love is sometimes these guys if he's around 12 buy it makes it really hard and it, it limits does. you what you can do with it. But round 14, there's a few options, a few windows open, and you can pick and choose what happens through the year. What did I say last year, mate? It's called trade agility. I think I called it that. Let's go with it. It sounds good to me. Yeah, trade agility. Why not apply trade agility to this and actually be agile? Let the scores, let the season play out. Don't go planning too deep, but just have that pivot offshoot. How are you going to go with it? Are you going to go up? Are you going to go down? Are you going to go sideways? You can go anywhere with this, mate. So these are the ones that I love. These are the ones that go, you know what? You don't have to go, oh, I want to trade into a Dacos who's going to be number one at – round seven or something sure. like that, okay? This one is like, you know what? Zach Williams was pretty much a top-lined, top-priced um, rookie 
mm. across some of the formats. Um, low end mid pricer if you really want to be cheeky, <laughs> rightio. Um, that means you can go anywhere with him. Yeah, you can go down, you can go up because he's probably going to start as a D five, D six potentially, no higher than a D four. Yes, agree with that. So you can go anywhere with it, and you know you think about the likely DPPs early in the season, McKercher potentially, Zach Fisher possibly. Yeah. You can actually use him to go to any line with that because those guys can come in and be your Zach Williams at that point when the DPPs come in. So this is why this guy is so relevant across everything. 61% ownership in Supercoach at time of recording, 38% in AFL Fantasy and 54% in Dream Team. So he's inside that top 10 of the most owned defenders across the formats in some formats, top 10 most owned across the format. So you've got this guy that's got historical pedigree, high ownership, and yes, an injury history. But that is offset by these other things. You're not paying 700000 in AFL Fantasy or 500000 in Dream Team and Supercoach. You're paying for, as Rids has said, politely an inflated cash cow with a proven performance, with high ownership, and the parachute options out for you are really simple. Opening round, what are the metrics and markers you need him to make for you to select him? Is it about role? Is it about game style? Is it about scoring? Is it about him getting subbed off in opening round? What are the things you need to see? Know those markers and then execute as you head into round one. Covering a round two buy with Brisbane and Carlton, politely, you can't start a Williams and a Coleman in the same universe, that's really elevating your risk profile that's beyond what I would encourage people to take in that defensive line. So you pick one over the other. Clearly, I'm heading Williams ahead of it based on where he is in the 50. So jump on board and make that move. Just watch round one. If he gets injured, the better part of more than half of the most serious coaches are in the same pain point as you. And and Rids, we, we do need to move into drafts in a second, but early bullets aren't actually the worst thing that can come our way. People that had Josh Kelly last year, people that had Tom Stewart last year in round one, well, no one likes a bullet trade that you've got to make. What it can do is it gives you an ease of accessibility to make the trade to that mid-price guy that is popping and not make a trade that ultimately is going to damage your team by moving out of the guy you should have kept. And I This episode is brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know, to check you have the tickets in your wallet first before you drive two hours to the big game. Seriously, you had one job. Now the closest you'll get to the 50-yard line is parking lot D. Yeah. Checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Northbrook, Illinois. Just want to highlight again. I, I highlighted a couple of weeks ago. Matt Mottram, okay? He won the whole comp a couple of years ago. And last year, he was in the top 10 for nearly the whole year, okay? He actually started last year with Cherry and Kelly. So it just goes to show that sometimes we talk and we say it's a trading game, but we really need some opportunities, some bullets to actually really force the trading game at times. So just because you get an early bullet and you're hundred percent correct, mate, just because you get one doesn't mean it's the end of the year. It gives you an opportunity to actually invoke and show everyone how good you are at the trading game. Yeah, 100%. Look, for me, I've got Zach clearly by placing him at number 10 inside who I believe are the most relevant players to have a conversation. Rids has summed it up beautifully. If he delivers on his potential of what he's done previously, gosh, we're getting one of the biggest bargains of the year. If he breaks down with injury, owners that are on him, which is a large portion of the competition, now have an opportunity to divert in a number of different avenues and angles, and that's a good thing. Equally, those turned off by the early buy or by the injury history, if he fires against you, what are you going to do? Are you prepared to trade into that injury risk, which historically 
only increases with every played game? Or are you going to back against that and hope it doesn't burn you anymore? Whichever and way one this more plays thing, out, MJ. it could be One painful. more thing. I've got my hand up. One yes, more thing. Do. And I know there's AI reds in the background, so you haven't you. seen my hand up. It, it's pretty like for like, yeah? Yeah, it's very hey, guess similar. guess what, mate? What do we need to do a VC loophole through some of these early buys? Some blue dots. We need a red dot, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a few ways we can do this. We can actually loop the bench so we can have a rookie flowing into a rookie and Mm -hmm. have Williams as the guy to, you know, take or not take. The VC to the captain loophole actually can be used with Williams. So having some of these guys as early buy options isn't a terrible, terrible thing at all. Absolutely. We know rookie roulette and getting the right rookie on field is at its hardest point sometimes in the first four or five weeks of the year as everything kind of settles with teams and structures and how the sub vest will work for us this year is is another new intricacy to, to navigate our way around with it only being named from within the 23 and finding it out an hour before, not from the emergencies. And we find that out two to three days earlier. So I'm with you. I think there's some great strategy aspects that Zach opens up for us. And on draft day, well, that gets interesting. Um, Some will see the injury history and go, I don't want a player like that. Others will look at the scoring pedigree that has been and go, I want a bite of that. I'd feel really nervous if you're jumping anywhere inside your first three on-field defender selections. That feels like you're really buying in to salary cap hype, which certainly does sway uh, certain people in the draft community with their picks while others draft off historical average, which means they won't even notice Zach exists. Where do you see Zach going on draft day? Is it the salary cap and classic hype that will win out or will it be the previous season averages that helps us see him fall under the radar and go late? So I was just having a look at it and I've, <laughs> it's so hard to predict this year because there's so many variables as what you just said. But I'd be putting him into a category of about four or five, have a range of four or five guys that you'd happily take as your D4, okay, on your team. Because that would be it. Maybe it's a Braden Maynard. Maybe it's a Trent Rivers. Maybe Mm -hmm. it is a Jason Johannesson. Or maybe it is a Adam Saad. You know, because he feels like he meshes those names pretty well as an average potential type, because he isn't going to start the year at his best. He's going to work his way into it. So I'd be very hesitant to trade out of him anyway if he does start a bit slower, because he's only going to get better. Same sort of thought process with draft, okay? He don't go trading him because you're going, I wanted a 95 guy and he's delivering 75s. So I think that D4 is about the right made across all the formats. You could potentially argue maybe a D3 and a super coach, but, you know, it's probably a bit of a stretch. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I can't see him feeling great confidence that he's going inside the first 30 defenders taken, but that sort of 35, 40, 45 range where we're starting looking for upside, he, he is going to be considered by coaches. And what I would say, if you are worried about the injury risk, well, protect the pick with another pick. Draft a little bit deeper into that defensive line or a defender mid or a defender forward just on the off chance that, yeah, the injury narrative holds true. Do that. Uh, but don't miss that nugget of gold Rids just dropped in the draft conversation for classic owners. Well, if he goes 60, 65 over those first two weeks, don't be fooled. Is he not being subbed out? Is he building? Do the eye test. Data and analytics are a really important part of the game. But sometimes watching and understanding what's happening in a game of football and how a player does rebuild their strength and conditioning after a long-term injury, let alone their confidence, is a really important thing. Hey, mate, it's always a pleasure talking fantasy footy with you. Thanks so much for uh, making the time to talk about who I think and you think as well is a very, very relevant player in 2024. And I just want to leave on one note, and I'll make it AF just for now, okay? Yes. Zach Williams might have an injury history, okay? That's that's evident, right? But think about the hype that's going on right now for another injury history person, okay? 
That's two hundred, just under two hundred thousand more than Zach Williams. That's how cheap Zach Williams is, and that's Elliot Yo, righty ho. So I just want to put things into perspective a little bit. Just don't overthink this one. This one doesn't need to be overthought. It's just, does he fit your team? Yeah. And what is your expectations? And manage your expectations on the guy, and you'll be a lot okay. Yeah, it's good advice. Nice little sneaky one for us to consider about that as well. If you want to read the article about Zach or any of the other players of the 50 most relevant, it is online for you now at coachespanel.tv. These audio podcasts have been dropping every single day since January 1. If you're just getting into your super coach, AFL fantasy or dream team preseason, lucky you. You have got a whole bunch of episodes to go back and rediscover through this preseason. In fact, as people, and we hear different conversations about players popping up through the preseason and different roles that we have covered through the 50 most relevant, we built this episodic series in a way where you could look back at this in time, not just as a one-time listen, but to listen back and watch back some of them because there's some great nuances and second and third learnings you can take. So if you're listening to podcasts, wherever you've listened to this episode, you can go and find us. Make sure you've subscribed. You can find us there and then give it a five-star rating while we're on you. YouTube this preseason and through the season proper. We've just started doing it for 2024 preseason. If you're enjoying watching these videos or you've already got a YouTube, go over, subscribe, get those notifications turned on. So as soon as an episode drops, you're notified straight away every day in the preseason. Even once the 50 most relevant is done, we will be posting content every single day through YouTube and over on our podcast pages. So make sure you're followed across that and all the details about where you can join the conversation with us across social media, as well has become a part of our Patreon supporter group are found in the description of this episode. All right, time to do something we haven't done all pre-season in the 50 most relevant and move from double digits into the single digits. I'm running out of players I can give good clues about. So let me give you one that OG listeners of the coaches panel, and when I mean OG, I mean anyone more than 12 months, will probably understand. He was someone that Rids and I were incredibly bullish on in 2024. There was some role concern back then, but we found a way that we still found him incredibly compelling and incredibly relevant. And yet it didn't work out the way we'd hoped. But the good news is it's created a new pathway for us to feel not just bullish potentially about his scoring potential, but that finally he could do something for us that we haven't been able to do in this line all year. Have confidence in someone to deliver. Who is this player that some are really freaked out and turned away from, while others see him as the greatest anchor they could have in their football side this year for Supercoach, AFL Fantasy and Dream Team? Is he an anchor that's going to weigh you down? Or is he going to be an anchor that keeps you afloat when you need it? Who is he? You'll find out tomorrow in the 50 Most Relevant. Give it all, now give it all.